Hey everyone, today we're going to be using AWS to create an RDS instance. So what does that mean? That means we're going to create a database on AWS. Now the database that you can create on AWS varies from what you want. You can create an Oracle uh, database, you can create a Postgres, you can create a MySQL, and you'll see that now in a minute. But in this video we're going to be creating a Postgres database. We're going to connect to that database on our laptop to make sure everything's working okay. The first thing we'll do is when we log into the AWS console is to look for RDS. So RDS is just another name that Amazon has for their database and that's what the RDS stands for, Relational Database Service. Um, we can see at the minute we have no instances for our database so if we click on this Again, there's nothing here at the minute. This will be populated now in a second. If we click on the Create Database button, and now we can choose which flavor of SQL we want to use. For this video, I'm going to use Postgres, but there is an option for MySQL, Oracle, MariaDB, and AWS's own flavor called Aurora. So standard create, that's going to be the cheaper version because if we were to go with the easy creation it follows best practices and things like that so it can cause additional charges so we don't want to go for that and if we scroll down here a little bit we're going to select free tier because that's what we're interested in and when we do select free tier it automatically selects a single db instance first it's not supported it's not multi az it's not got a it's not going to have our database backed up in mul on multiple servers and multiple locations but we don't really care for that because it is the free tier and it's only for demonstration purposes if you were using production you could have multiple AZ cluster AZ is availability zones availability zones are just imagine different places in the world so if there's a power outage in London you're server with the exact same data is going to be backed up over in maybe America somewhere or maybe in Dublin so you never lose access to your database you never lose access to your data anyway we're not going to go for that we're going for the single instance and um, this here the identifier this can be anything let's just change this to YouTube the master username we could change this if we want I'm going to just leave it as Postgres like that and now we need to fill in a password so I'm just gonna quickly put in a password here and this will be what we use to to connect to our database and we don't want to auto generate one we don't want to bother storing the credentials so this is the type of uh, server that our database is going to be deployed on it's a db it's a t3 micro is the name of it so there's some options you can get this t3 micro there's also this other one here and i thought there was a, a third option with the free tier but it looks like it it looks like these two are the ones that we can pick from and if you look at the, the stats on it they're pretty much the same so if we scroll down another bit allocated storage 20 we're going to leave it at 20 because 20 is by default the the free tier allowance and we can set a maximum storage we can put it to 100 we don't need to connect to an ec2 this will be connecting to our our machine so we we want a, an ipv4 address and we want it to be public so where we see public access here we need to take yes choose an existing vpc yeah that's fine and now we're going to use password for authentication yep and now it's saying the estimated costs so since there is a free tier it's 750 hours 20 gigabytes the general purpose ssd and 20 gigabytes for backup we should never actually incur this at all if you were to create multiple databases or if you were to switch this up here outside the free tier limits so you want to use any of these so uh, database t3 micro so that's the one that we selected and um, 
it does actually say that there's three different versions here. I didn't see this one listed above though, um, but this is the one that we're using. And if we go and create this database, now this may take a little while. You can see it has a, it's just prompting us here about additional things. Nope, we don't need to worry about a proxy or elastic cache just yet. Anyway, um, as I was saying, the status on this is creating. So this is just creating the database first. It's also going to do like an automatic backup. So you'll see this this status changing to a couple of different things before it actually gets completed, and then we'll be actually able to connect to the database. So I'm going to wait for this, and I'll come back to you in a second. Now we can see that our status has changed to available, so we should be able to connect to our database. Now there's one thing that we might have to do, and that's around security groups, to make sure that anyone can actually connect to it from any IP, but let's just give it a go and see can we connect first. So as I said this YouTube here is just a name, that's a unique name to Amazon for us to be able to identify different databases that we have. Now this endpoint here, this is our actual database that we want to hit. So if I was to take this and I was to delete this host and put it in there, that's what we want to hit. Postgres is the name of the user and then the password that we created. The database, I believe by default, there is a Postgres database. Then the port is 5432. If we go back here, we can see that is indeed the port. Now, if we test this connection, will it work? So it's taken a little bit of time there, which is not a good sign. So I believe that it's not going to connect. I think we may have to yeah, okay, so it's failed. That's fine. In this tab, if we have a look at security, we can see there's a default one here, which is active. But if we click on that, we'll see the inbound rules, which is allowing all traffic. And the outbound rules is also allowing all traffic. And if I went to edit those inbound rules, this here, this custom thing here, anywhere. So that's what we want here. Oh, sorry, I have to do custom and then this. If I add a rule and I say that I want it to be, I want this to be all traffic, I want this to be like this, and what if I delete this? Save that like so. Now if I go to my security groups, that's my inbound rules, that is all traffic, and that is source from anywhere. So I think that looks much better and then for our outbound rules it doesn't really matter but it looks like that is set up correctly already so if I go back here and put in my password again and test this connection look at it's successful so that was the issue yeah by default the the outbound rules were fine because it was taking all traffic and it was allowing it from allowing it to go anywhere which was exactly what we wanted but as far as the inbound rules so people trying to hit our database it wasn't allowing all traffic to do that so we have to change this now we could make this a little bit better we could make an edit to this and we could only allow my IP to, to use it so if I was the only one connecting to the database that would be the most secure thing to do the only thing to keep in mind is if your ISP changes your public IP address, you would have to come in here and, you know, kind of not constantly but regularly change it depending on when your internet service provider changes your public IP. So, depending on what level of security you want, you could have it so that only you are able to access it through your public IP. You could have it open for everyone to access it but you obviously do have the security of the you know, username and password there. Now one thing to note is the database is Postgres, that's the one by default. You you know probably want to change that. Uh, again the user by default it was Postgres in there so we used Postgres as well. The only thing you have really to secure yourself is the, the password and this is a bit complicated as well so 
like you know a malicious person would have to figure out this host name which could be difficult or could be easy depending on if you're calling it maybe through a website or something like that it might be easy to get the host and all they'd have to do is guess the password so those are things you can you can change like the username and the and the database to make it a bit more secure if you want to leave it open we see this is successful this works this connects so the next thing I'll share with you is how we would actually go about deleting it so if we no longer need our relational database or let's say you've been working with Postgres and now you realize that you want something else you want to use Oracle or MySQL or you want to try out Aurora we want to delete this so all we do is we select this here go to actions and we hit delete now this here creates a final snapshot of the database so we don't want that because if you create a final snapshot that snapshot is stored on AWS and that will result in a cost so we don't want that retain automatic automated backups again we don't want that we're deleting this database we want to have nothing got to do with it anymore it was just used for demo purposes and then you say delete me and we delete now you can see it's changed to deleting and again like the same way it took a couple of minutes for the database to create it'll take a couple of minutes for it to delete as well so if we test this connection it mightn't work it might okay so it's it's still it's still working at the minute um but what will happen is in the next few seconds or whatever it'll you won't be able to connect to it and then it'll start to tear down all the other stuff associated with it so you know all the data although we really have no data in this so it should be relatively quick but it still will take a couple of minutes if you were using a database like this and you had a lot of data associated with it it would take a little bit longer so if we do a refresh here we just see it, it probably won't change it probably will be still at this deleting stage but let's just see uh, yeah so it's it's still at this and it could be at this for for a couple of minutes or a few minutes um, but that's it really that's how you create a relational database with AWS and that's how you connect and that's how you delete it if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe so I can see you in the next one